this is Ian Nethercott from the Auto Hub Show uh, podcast. And as you know, if you didn't already know, you should. Uh, we're doing a new interview show for the 2024 season as we roll into uh, season five of the show. And we like to do interviews with interesting people that may or may not be able to appear, uh, you know, obviously on the show live, but also it's just a more one on one conversation. Uh, and of course, uh, if you're not familiar with Larry, you should be. Uh, he's been a sponsor of the show from the early days. He's a regular on the show as well. Uh, he does a lot of different things uh, internationally, both in Canada and the U.S., including training and recruiting, uh, find, finding some of the hardest people to find in the industry, including technicians, managers, and, of course, training staff to make sure when you hire them that uh, they you know stick around. Um, if you are interested in reaching out to Larry, he's easy to find. He actually answers his cell phone. Shocking that that may seem in 2024. It's 215-407-5174. Or you can email Larry, Larry at careerchangersusa.com or check him out online. Or, of course, you can catch him on the Auto Hub show on Mondays and uh, get his opinion of his uh, uh, view on things every single week. Anyway, Larry, tell me more about you and how you got involved with the Auto Hub show. And let's go from there. Good morning. Sure. Um, I'm a uh, former salesperson, former automobile dealership owner. Um, I heard the Auto Hub show uh, and said, wow, these guys are, are pretty funny and uh, pretty interesting. And I, I like the format. And I, I think I reached out to you, Ian, a few years ago. I, I, and yeah. you said, sure, jump on. And uh, heck, I, I got lucky. My first show uh, was with John Kostakis which led to me coming up and training in different parts of Canada, Edmonton and Toronto. Um, and it's just been great. Uh, you know, I, I, I enjoy the format. I enjoy the fact that everybody gets a chance to speak and um, just having fun. I mean, if you're not going to have fun, why show up? <laughs> exactly. Uh, we actually just lost this week. One of our, I guess, best uh, journalists, uh, Rex Murphy. Uh, he, he's a, uh, he was a Rhodes Scholar, but more importantly, he was a guy from Newfoundland who uh, shockingly told the truth a lot, uh, but also was a bright guy. I and mean, he died this week, but he was writing up until his last week. I think he was 77. But what was interesting about the gentleman was um, he pissed off our local media <laughs> because even though they produced his show, he had opinions. And the opinions weren't always left or right. He just was a very bright guy. So it was kind of interesting just because I think you add a lot of value to the show, especially on the tech side, but also just because you've lived it. There's a lot of people who train or recruit in the car business who really don't know much about the car business. And not that that's a slag on them by any stretch, but it's always good to see someone who's been there. It's a little hard to speak uh, like you know if you don't know. And, and maybe you can speak a little bit to that. I know we have a, a few kind of posers in training uh, that aren't quite what they seem. So go ahead. Give me your thoughts on that, Larry. Well, well, before anything else, rest in peace to that fine journalist. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, even before he was born, a lot of journalists um, believed that their purpose was to comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable. Um, and, and, you know, speak truth to the fact that, hey, this is wrong. We're here. You know, it, for the press to work, it has to be neutral. It, yep. it, it can't be pro-liberal, pro-conservative. It has to say... I like this guy, but this is wrong, or I hate this guy, but he's right. So, uh, you know, you, you hate to see anyone that, that stands up for the truth to go. Uh, yeah. As far as as far as far training, and, and listen, there's plenty of people out there that are, that are talented, that care. Um, the reason I believe my program works and is so effective, thank goodness, is I pour myself completely into it. Um, you've been to a couple of my trainings, Ian. I yeah. go three hours, sometimes three and a half hours. Nobody wants to go to the bathroom. Nobody wants to look at their iPhone. Um, it's because it's more about them than it is about me. I want to get everybody involved. I want to talk about topics that make sense to them. I try to avoid the cliches and the homilies. And again, I just try to have fun. I mean, if, you, if you're not having fun, why show up? And as far as posers, the word you used Forget about training. We're seeing that in every aspect of our lives and our politics. Right. People that say one thing and do another. I, I got to tell you the truth. I'm, I am so far from perfect. I might be the most imperfect guest you'll ever have on, but I'm not a hypocrite. And hypocrites drive me berserk. Um, be what you are. If you're a jerk, be a jerk. If you're really good, be really good. But, you know, the old uh, 
you know, wolf in sheep's clothing it just doesn't do a damn thing for me. So I don't want to knock anybody else. I just know that the people that come to my uh, classes learn. I learn. Everybody has fun. And I've got a nice track record of, of having lots of people hired, lots of people who are now in management, a lot of that are now in senior management. And that's it. Show up, do your best, have fun. Who's going to beat you up for that? And if they do beat you up at that point, the heck with them because you can say you've given your best. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, the one thing that got me into the car business, I think initially, and has has made the car business interesting for me for almost 25 years now, shocking though it may seem, is having fun every single day. It's not your normal job. You're not dealing with normal situations. Perfection is a lofty goal, but it may not always be attained. But more importantly, you're dealing with people. And I see lots of people talking about data and they're talking about technology and there's nothing wrong with that. But really what I think they forget is it's always about customers and customers come from every walk of life. They have all kinds of life stories. They have all kinds of uh, um, goods and bads in their life. No one's perfect. And that's one of the best things about interviewing people on this show, uh, whether it's the show Mondays at uh, 11 o'clock East or whether it's the interview show, because I get to hear more about the life story. And I know we've, we've talked a little bit over the years about your history in the car business, but where did Larry get started? How did Larry get in the car business? What's the story? Got got in by accident. Um, I, I was approached by a very good friend of mine to try to buy uh, a Ford dealership. And it, it didn't work out, not on our end, on, on the person trying to sell it to us end. Mm -hmm. um, and the idea was, Larry, you got all the energy in the world and you got some money and blah, blah, blah. But when that fell through, it, it kind of occurred to me that if I was even thinking of this endeavor, and it was more my friend's idea than mine, because he was a flat out car guy, yeah. that I should get involved in the car business. And I did. And I, I, um, I had success from the day I walked into the dealership. Now, I'm not bragging. The reason I had success was I did the things that you should do that for some reason people don't grasp to do. Um, I, I networked from day one. I prospect from day one. Um, and I, I just see, I can't understand people who choose to be bored and waste their time. You know, you know, you love it when I quote Ben Franklin, who's my true hero and idol and who yeah. I consider the most accomplished man that ever lived. Roughly paraphrasing, he said, if you love life, then cherish time because that is what life is made of. Right. I don't understand. I will never understand uh, people that go to work, spend all day being miserable or being bored go home and, and set up to do it the next day. I liked back then we didn't have iPhones. I like looking at my watch and saying, wow, it's time to go home. The day flew by. That's a matter of keeping yourself busy. Um, I also was lucky enough to work in a state, unlike Ohio and Virginia, that allowed bird dogs, referral fees. I don't right. know anybody that doesn't want $100 for sending in a customer. Wealthy right. people drive their Bentleys across town to save three cents on a gallon of gas. So with, with those principles in mind, that I didn't want to be bored, um, and as you're well aware, I have a tenuous grasp on reality and I'm a little crazy, I figured if I was fun and I was meticulous on top of it, who was going to beat me? And the answer is uh, nobody. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I mean, the reason I got in the car business was I thought the bar was set pretty freaking low. Like when I bought cars over my life, even before I got in the car business, when I was in dealerships and I liked cars, what what shocked me was just how poor the experience was. I'm like, I gotta be able to be better than this. I just gotta be because it's just so low. Like I was like, you just gotta be that you know 20 percent better and you'll be a rock star. And that that was kind of interesting. I was talking to uh, one of these millennials at a gym that I go to every day now because I'm diabetic and I go to the gym seven days a week. And he was lamenting about the fact that this and that and a bag of chips. I said. You have all the time in the world, but more importantly, you're interested in working. And I'm not saying all millennials aren't interested in working. I'm just saying the bar, just like an auto, is pretty low. If you if you can do 30, 40, 50 percent better than that, um, you're going to do very, very well in life. And I think that's something my dad taught me that served me very, very well. But more importantly, I think that's something that is is true in any business, but especially the car business. He was talking a little bit this morning about. Uh, discrepancies in pay by gender, by class, by this or that. And I said, well, the great news about the car business is you get paid for what you do. So it's if you do more, yeah, you do more, you make more. 
Yeah. So I think that's another thing that really, as people are looking for staff, I mean, maybe you have some tips about how to find them, but more importantly, for those watching who maybe aren't in the car business, um, you know, it's a great business, but more importantly, whether you're a man, a woman or not sure, you can still make money as long as you, as long as you put in the work. And I think that's what really, you know, kept me in the car business, but more importantly, it isn't a boring job. You're not doing the same thing every day. It, well, hold on. And it's boring if you choose to be boring. Yeah, that's it, true. It, again, I'm jumping back to old quotes. I love the quote Thoreau who said last century, most men lead lives of quiet desperation. Why would right. you want to get up every morning and dread going to work and dread being at work and then go home dreading the fact that tomorrow you're going to have to go to work? I just like staying busy. I, I just like the right. sense of, of achievement. By the way, you said, do I have any tips on getting staff? I have yeah. a really good tip for anybody out there that needs staff. Call me. <laughs> yeah, there's a number very subtly below me, just so you know, in the video. Uh, you can definitely call Larry. And shockingly, I know that a lot of people like to text on these devices. Larry actually uses the most expensive phones in the universe to actually answer phone calls. So you can actually get him on the phone. And, and more importantly, he gets results. I mean, there's a lot of uh, what I'd consider headhunters, potentially, or even recruiting companies, and even HR departments for big dealer groups. They sometimes need help because they're having trouble finding people. But, you know, when you're when you're finding people for car dealers, you know, how, you know, how does that process go from a customer point of view? Like, I'm dealing with a car dealer or a dealer group. You know how easy it is to work with Larry. I mean, that's my question. I, I don't know, so I haven't I haven't worked for you personally as a car dealer. So maybe you um, can um, the reason that I'm the easiest person to work with on the planet Earth are there's actually a couple reasons. First of all, I have a severe attitude of gratitude. I'm glad I'm alive. Yeah. I'm glad I'm breathing. I'm I'm glad I have my iced tea since I'm an iced tea drinker. I'm glad I'm talking to my buddy Ian. Just glad. If you get up in the morning and you're excited about everything and you know there's going to be some bad stuff, but if you know you get past that, you get to the good stuff, this is easy. So I'm very grateful. Uh, I'm, I'm dealing with 200 plus dealers. And every time somebody calls me, I'm reminded that the greatest high isn't marijuana. It's not heroin. It's not speed. It's not liquor. It's when people say yes to a salesperson. Right. So I'm always excited to get work. So I'm always gr grateful and I always act like I'll never have another customer. So I jump on it immediately. Ian, this is the, any vendor will tell you this. What frustrates them the most is a dealer will reach out to them. Notice the order. We didn't reach, they reached out to us. And, and in my case, I, I hear this conversation a lot. Feldman, I heard you can get texts. Is that true? Yes. And I, I list 10, 20 people. They said, oh my God, you're a lifesaver. I'm desperate. Okay. Never hear from them again. This is like calling 911 and saying I'm having a heart attack. And they say, well, come right over. No, let me, let me watch the ball game first. If I'm still alive, I'll call you back. So the fact that I'm expedient, I jump right on it. The fact that I'm glad to get the work and I continue to show that is what makes all the difference. Uh, there are very, very large companies out there, big ones. I won't mention their name and I'm cleaning their clocks. They're, they're, they got bigger companies. They got more employees. They got way more tech and data. Who cares? You can yeah. reach me. I can reach the dealer. Here, I just got, I won't use the names. I had somebody call me up and say, Larry, we need your help. We desperately need a warranty administrator for Chrysler. Okay. This is like a, a purple unicorn, not just a regular unicorn. So within two days, I had a candidate that called me. I didn't wait. I didn't go through the drill. I called the fixed ops director who picked up because he knew it was me, connected them. They're hired. He called me back. He said, you know, as usual, I appreciate the fact that you actually took the time to call me at eight o'clock at night. Uh, second, I can't believe you found somebody so quick. Now, I got a little lucky with finding them. I'm, I'm not, you know, I won't right. deny that. But I was on top of it, right? Yeah. right? Success is when luck meets opportunity. And the harder you work, the luckier you get. So, yeah, uh, it's, cool. and it's so it's so funny to me because the big companies are big. And if you have a giant ship, it takes a long time to turn it around. If you and me are on a rowboat, hey, let's go that way. And we turn. Yeah, one of my favorite quotes of all time. Uh, there's actually a couple that have been rattling around my head recently. One of them is, uh, the harder I work, the more luck I seem to have. But the other one is, uh, I think it's a Henry Ford quote. 
the reason people aren't successful is it's dressed in overalls and it looks like work. And that's the other one. I think that's the quote. It might, I might be paraphrasing, but I mean, at the end of the day, um, you know, part of the challenge today for a lot of people is they get exhausted going through an HR process for a company, small or big, and really they just need a job. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. But when you're find, trying to find those people that say are technicians that are already gainfully employed, you've got to make it worth their while. Like there's, there's not more of those unicorns, right? Can I, can I give you an example? Yeah. Of how easy it is. And if I'm giving any of my competitors a tip, that's fine. Since I'm whooping all your butts, you probably need a little help. Um, <laughs> I make it easy on the candidate and on human resources. I make sure I get every piece of paper that human resources needs immediately. Front and back of the license, anything that they could want. And I tell the candidate, if this clicks, you don't want to wait to get hired. You want to be as expeditious as possible. And the way to do that, to be as expedient as is to get your stuff done. The number one complaint at car dealerships is not that we rip them off, that we it's how long it takes. That's because salespeople go go to the manager at what's called the sales desk, wait five minutes for their turn and say, boss, I think he loves this car. Sales manager says, Great, does he have a trade? I'll find out. They go back, they find out. Now there's two people in front of him, another five, six minutes go away. Yep, he's got a trade, boss. Great. Any, does he owe any money? I'll be right back. But if from the very beginning, we set it up there. Now, the other thing that happens is, um, and you're, you're, Ian and I, just a disclaimer, have become very good friends through the show and through the various meetings we've been at. So he'll tell you gladly that I am a schizophrenic, that I might be the craziest guy he's ever had on his show, but I'm also the most meticulous. Uh, not bragging about it. I'm just a little, I'm wired that way. Um, and when human resources realizes that the email's right and the phone number's right, and that if they call me, they'll get an answer, now they start to take a deep breath. Human resources doesn't like being typified as the people that always hold things up. They're under pressure themselves because they don't want to let anything happen bad to the company by not right. screening properly. And a lot of that is because they get bad information or partial information. So if the HR department's happy because everything's complete, and the candidate senses that I'm trying to push these things through as quickly as possible, everybody wins. So again, there's no data there. There's no AI. It's just simple old school. Take your time when you write things down. Yes, I actually write things down, okay? Um, and, and make it clear to people that you're important to me and human resources is important to me. Again, we're in a very strange time in our planet. I've never seen people so angry, so on edge, so opinionated, and a lot of times about things that they, they have no knowledge of. If you can just be friendly and nice and be a can do it to, to make things work, I think you own the world. Oh, 100%. I mean, I, I, it was interesting. I was watching, I think it was a prayer breakfast presentation the other day. And there, one, of, one of the leaders, political leaders, was talking about the people in the room. And he said, the, the reason all the politicians are in the front of the room is they need the most redemption. <laughs> and I thought that was very interesting. As, but, as, uh, my, as one, another one of my heroes, Harry Truman, said, when they holler too loud in church, you better lock up the smokehouse. <laughs> yeah, he had some interesting thoughts, and it was interesting because the one political leader was speaking, and his opposition was sitting a couple doors over, and he, he was doing double takes during the whole presentation because he was like, oh, I might have learned something. It was kind of funny, but... Yeah, when you look at uh, when you look at the world today, and I, I got this uh, cool insight book actually from CDK the other day, and there was a lot of data in this book, and it, I thought it was interesting how they broke out generations. You know, what advice do you have to a car dealer who maybe is a Gen X or a baby boomer who's having to hire millennials and Gen Zs today, and having challenges not only finding them but keeping them on staff? What advice do you have there? Sure, it's to adjust your perception of other people's perceptions. Uh, you and I, Ian, when we got into the car business, we wanted to have a nice place to work, no question. But what we really wanted to do is have an opportunity to make money. Right. Um, guys would go and ladies would go where they had the most opportunity to make money. That was their focus. We've gotten a lot more touchy-feely as we've gone along. And people are a lot more concerned. If you would have talked 30 years ago about a dealer and say, let's hire a bunch of guys and tell them they can have every third Saturday off, he would have fired you. Are you crazy? <laughs> but at this point, people's time off and people's 
a relationship to the rest of their life is more important than making money, which, which again, 30 years ago, they would have laughed at you. So let's start to think, I teach my, my candidates, my salespeople, whether I'm training them or getting them hired and training them to think like their customers, to empathize. Right. We have to empathize with the people we're working with. Now, you may think it's crazy. Uh, you want this time off. But if it's important to them, it's all that matters. You right. know, you, you, your flavor ice cream is different than mine. Doesn't mean I'm right or you're right. It just means this is what we like. So once we take the time to find out what makes our salespeople or any of our employees happy and motivated, do you understand that now they can take the time to find out what makes their customers happy and motivated? Right. You draw. Listen, you grow up in an abusive home. You're probably going to be abusive. We, yeah. uh, it, it's nature and nurture. W what we learn and, and what is is literally beaten into us or, or, or we absorb through comes through. Uh, I, you, I've said this to you before and you always chuckle at it. Uh, I'm really good. And I think you are, too, at absorbing the negative and right. learning from it, and making it a positive. Uh, the first week I was at the dealership, I'm going way back. The GM was leaving and the operator said, you have a call, boss. And he said, tell him I left. And I thought he's a moron. And I mean moron in the most loving way. OK, I don't want any letters from the anti-moron defamation league. Um, what if it was a guy that wanted to buy two cars? He might yeah. be a fed. guy doesn't have time for me. I'll go down the block. What if it was somebody with a small problem? You fix it. You're a hero. You let it fester overnight. They're furious. Maybe that's one of the reasons that I'm, I answer my phone all the time. I even hired... A young lady I sold a car to a long time ago to answer the phone when I can't, when I'm on a plane or I'm training. Yeah. Because I, listen, Ian, we're all the same. That's why anti-Semitism and racism and all these prejudices are ridiculous. We're way more alike than we are dissimilar. Right. Think how frustrated you, your wife, Johanna, and everybody you ever met is when you really have to talk to somebody and you can't get them on the phone. It drives you crazy. So my, my solution simple. Call me. You get me. Yeah. Well, hundred percent. I mean, it's, it's interesting because when you look at, I know there's a lot of talk and we, I even had on a fourth anniversary show, some feedback where I need to have more diverse guests, which I'm always trying to find. And I know there's a lot of talk about, uh, I guess the new alternative action. I mean, uh, affirmative action, which is gender diversity and inclusion, which I'm not against, but to quote my brother who, by the way, lives in uh, LA, even though he's not really, I would say a leftist by any stretch, not that there's good or bad there. He says, I don't care if you have blue hair and you're a unicorn, as long as you show up. And the thing that was really interesting was he said, well, after the pandemic, he had all these employees that work from home and he had to call them and say, listen, like, I know you don't want to come back to the office, but do you want to get paid? If you want to get paid, you got to come back to the office. If you don't want to, that's fine. We can find someone else to do the job. And I think that's the, 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 the thing that's interesting is you bring up generations as a dealer is pretty active on LinkedIn. I'm not sure the dealer off the top of my head. But he put a post up the other day. He was asking how to motivate his staff. And he had a list of things on a, on a poll. So I reached out to him and I said, why not ask your staff? He says, well, it's not really conducive to have different pay plans for different people. I said, well, why not? If that motivates the person and it gets your goal accomplished, there's nothing to say you can't have a customized option like a menu. Like I got, there's five ways to do a bonus program. Here's the five ways. doesn't matter to me. As long as you get the goal accomplished, what's what motivates you? Is it time off? Is it is it more money? Is it a demo? I mean, what is it? Uh, I mean, we talk a lot about women in the automotive industry and the fact that we can't retain them. And part of the reason is they have other priorities than going to work. They may have a kid at home. They may have family. You know, you, you got to be flexible today. And it's not all about money, even though that doesn't necessarily make sense to people in our generations where we go, okay, so you want me to come to work more, but you don't want to pay me more. Well, that doesn't make sense for me. But for some people, they want to go to work less as long as they put in the hours. So by, by, by the way, you, you you mentioned that you're not against DEI. No, I am. <laughs> OK, let, let's be real clear. OK, I'm a devotee of Dr. Martin Luther King, who said we should judge people on the content of, the, of their character rather sure. than the color of their skin. If somebody is the best at what they do or good at what they do. I could care less what color, what sexuality they, religion, I could care less. But when you start slamming things towards people just because of their color, their religion, their sexuality, you're right. destroying the concept of America as a republic and as a meritocracy. 
It makes no sense. It, 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 none. Listen, we're, we're, I happen to be Jewish. Uh, you know, uh, anybody has a problem with that? Come see me. I'll show you what a punch in the nose feels like. Okay. On, on every campus, they're, they're teaching diversity and how we must be understanding, I guess, unless you're Jewish. So uh, I'm very suspicious of things. We're right back to the hypocrisy that espouse one thing and result in another. You know what I'm into? I'm into a country called America where anybody can be rich. Anybody can be successful. Anybody can do what they want to do. Is it easy? Hey, nothing's easy. And is it fair? I got news for you. Life is not fair. All we want to do is live. The only thing we know for a fact is we're going to die. But I'm telling you, the beauty of this country is we can accomplish whatever we want. When we put too many precursors, too many conditions on what it is, how it is, where it is, we're done. Yeah. We're done. We're, does anybody think we're, we're we're better advanced in the positions we are now because of the of we we've, we've loosened the reins on how capable you are and put in more you know what you are or, or it makes no sense to me. So I just, I just had to mention that, Ian, because yeah. as you well as you well know, I'm trying to come out of my shell. I'm a little shy yeah. and self spoken. So. Well, it's funny you bring that up. So there's been a lot of protests around the world in big cities. And I happen to live in Calgary, Alberta these days, which uh, I'll have to say is uh, probably a little right of center politically as a, as, a, as a province in Canada or state if you're in the U.S. And they had a, they, the, the University of Calgary was having a student protest. And unlike every other big city that I've seen recently on the news, the police showed up and removed them. And there's all this media hype today and yesterday about this, but the police just showed up and got it done. Like, you cannot, you know, occupy a state, a, a city park with this. Like, we're going to remove you. Like, you can leave quietly or we're just going to show up and we're going to get it done. And I, I, I kudos were, were to the mayor, even though I don't 100% agree with her, and also to our premier, who's like a governor, who I always agree with because she's strong. Because they have an opinion. You don't have to agree with it, but law and order is not optional. You can't have a lack of law and order. And the same you, is true. You have the right to express your opinion, but you can't abridge anybody else's opinion or anybody else's rights. In the States, they're they're blocking highways. Well, that's wonderful to make your, your point, whether it's right or wrong. But what about an ambulance trying to get through or somebody trying to pick up their kid at school? You don't have the right. If you have a grievance, you have a right to air your grievance. You don't have a right to give me a grievance because you have a grievance. Well, yeah, there, 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 is, there was a guy, I think I was saying on YouTube, was that some of these guys just stopped oil in uh, in the UK and they were blocking a highway. The two, elder, the, the two elderly ladies, I saw them on the news with a hammer trying to break the glass case with a Magna Carta was in. That made plenty of sense. Yeah, yeah. there were these idiots on, uh, I think it was in London. I don't know. There was a whole bunch of idiots blocking traffic. So a guy came up and he, and he goes, what the hell are you guys doing? And he started removing them because oh, their outfits are made of plastic, of course. But the, the thing that kind of made me really, it was really funny to me was I was, uh, I was going to pick up my car last night because I had to move it because parking or whatever. Um, and there, there's a rail line down that comes, that goes from the oil patch, Northern Alberta down to the U S and they won't let them, I mean, they're finally doing some pipeline work, but they historically they haven't had enough pipelines to transport this. So they instead they've got a train a couple miles long. Each each train car's got about, I don't know, 20,000 gallons of crude oil on it. And I'm sitting there with my wife and I'm saying, Yeah, they're stopping oil, all right. <laughs> a couple of times a day, a mile of train cars with 20,000 gallons. Every of every solution, <laughs> every solution that's a result of the Green New Deal to make the air and the environment better is making it worse. That's where, once again, that's where ideology blows out common sense and logic. It, it should be, what is the res what are we trying to accomplish and what is the end result of our actions? Not here's our idea, right, wrong, they, 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 they're they doing wind, wind production. Okay, if it works, it's great. They're killing whales. Where are the same environmentalists that for years ran around saying, save the whales? Well, yeah, I mean, you've got, and, and, and the, the, the governor of our province had an interesting opinion on this. So they want they want her to go to net zero or whatever the, the group stupid is, whatever. So she says, no problem. It gets to negative 40 Celsius here in the winter, sometimes colder depending on where you are. We've got wind and we've got solar. But what if the wind isn't blowing and the sun ain't shining? We still got to power all this electricity to support the people who live in the province. She says, I'm going to vote with the people of the province who elected me and make sure they have power versus 
try and support the group stupid that says this would be a great solution if it only worked. And that's not to say that the, the answer isn't multiple things, but that, that to your point, it's really about common sense. Like what, you know, we should all be running in the same direction by giving people the rights they deserve and fought for, but more importantly, making sure that when we spend tax dollars collected from taxpayers, which who are really our boss, spend them intelligently. And ideally, conserve them if you can. I mean, I, I I just don't get it. But what shocks me, I guess, most lately is the fact that people aren't students of history. I mean, I watched a fascinating documentary yesterday on the history of Japan. Totally random topic. I knew very little about the country. And what was interesting about Japan as a country was they went down some bad side roads too. But what's interesting also is a lot, in a lot of cases, they haven't learned from them. And I think that's why I have always been interested in history. If you don't learn from it and you don't do better, you, you kind of deserve to have the side effects. And I think that's the challenge in modern civilization. I was talking to a gentleman this morning about Rome, the Roman Empire. And I looked at it and I said, well, the, the reason Rome fell apart is because they, they went too left. They went way off the cliff. And that disintegrated what was a very what the, one of the world's biggest empires, and I think that's sort of where we need to self-correct back. But more importantly, jump, Ian, course, jump forward a thousand or fifteen hundred years to Santiana, yeah. who said, "Those that forget history are doomed to repeat it." Yeah. If we don't learn from history, if we don't understand the purpose, we're there. You know, it. It, it, again, I'm, I'm, this is my second Harry Truman quote. You know this is going to be a good show. He said, we get the government we deserve. If you don't pay attention to who you're voting for and what lies behind what they say, what do you expect? You know, these. It, it, I interviewed Ralph Nader, um, who who you know is a great man because he irritated, he ir irritated all conservatives when he came out with unsafe at any speed, and yeah. he irritated all liberals when he ran against uh, Gore and Bush and, and they feel siphoned off Gore votes. Anybody can tick off everybody. And my mind's probably doing it the right thing. Um, he said, Larry, the problem with our country is if you're a sports fan, you can probably name your starting five on your basketball team and your infield. I said, yeah. He said, but you can't, most people can't name their congressman or their senator or their alderman. So you know who's, who's wearing a uniform and playing ball but you don't know who's making the laws or setting up the rules for the schools. Again, if we don't pay attention, and, and by the way, this, this parallels dealerships. If you're a dealership and you're not aware of what's going on in your service department or what the interaction is between your managers and your salespeople and your salespeople and your customers, you're going to have the same kind of problem. You know, guilt by omission. Not Man, try doing 90 miles an hour and getting pulled over by a cop and saying, oh, I wasn't aware of the speed limit. But you'll be aware when I give you the ticket. Exactly. When you look at dealerships, there are multiple businesses in the same building, and we know the departments fight with each other. But more importantly, as we roll into a, what we call the AI AIO show on Monday, it's going to be interesting because we're going to have a lot of technology companies, and we've had many shows on technology before, and this is the latest buzzword in the industry. But realistically, if you don't have the people in the process, the technology really doesn't matter. And I think that's the biggest challenge um, in front of us as we roll into 2025 eventually is, you know, technology alone ain't going to solve it. Um, you really need a, a comprehensive effort, but more importantly, you need to communicate. And that's something that I deal with on a daily basis, A, with the show, but B, with the companies I work with and for, where communication is an issue, where it's like, you know, you send an email, they don't read it, they respond in a weird way. You send a text message, they don't read it, they don't respond. You send a video, sometimes they watch it and sometimes they get it. But I think where, where we're challenged today, and maybe it's the fault of TikTok, maybe it's social media, um, is that we've forgotten basic communication things like slow down, read what you got to do, or watch what you got to do, and act as if, right? And, 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 and execute. And I think to me, that's also why history is fascinating. When I look at these echoes of history in, in, in the country I live in, but globally in every country, um, we, we really need to get back to basics um, in terms of management. We got to start looking at ways to fix this broken world as opposed to ripping it more apart. And but I think the that's- first, The first one is to acknowledge there's a problem. Yeah. If you're in denial, you never fix anything if you don't acknowledge first, this is, this is what's wrong. 
here's what we need to do or, or what we need to try to figure out to fix it. Yeah, I mean, I, I watch uh, occasionally Bill Maher on YouTube. I don't pay for HBO anymore. But uh, what's interesting to me about him as an individual, and I don't agree with all his politics, um, is, you know, he used to be left of center. <laughs> And, and now, now he's in the middle, and he's starting to be shift more and more to the right. And it's interesting because when 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 the, the when the poster child for the left start, starts acting like a right wing politician, that means the left has gone off the reservation. And it's going to be very interesting to see as the world goes back to center. And I think that's a great lesson for car dealers, but also for young people. Is to your point. You're paying taxes anyway. You might as well have a say in what they're doing, but more importantly, pay attention. What Beyonce is doing is not as important as what your local representative is doing with your money and more importantly, your future. And that, I think that's also why uh, training people and educating people, I find my job as I get older for the most part, as I meet people is to train them with some of the stuff that I've learned. So at least they have the benefit of the knowledge. Because I think that's part of what's been forgotten is these things, rightly or wrongly, have become sort of the instruction manual for life versus actually looking at the at the actual facts. And it's I think cri that's the Ian, critical thinking has gone the way of the dodo bird. It, it it's oh uh, yeah, no, I saw it. No, it's right. I saw it on on, on online. You know, Britney Spears is having Elvis's baby. It, it's online. It must be right, but it's not. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, it's been a great, uh, great conversation as always, Larry. Looking forward to a soda con. Uh, obviously, going to do lots of interviews. Um, obviously, if you're going to be at a soda con, uh, we'll be jumping from interview to interview and meeting a meeting. But happy to happy to do an interview and, and catch up. And of course, uh, if you are looking for staff or training or both, or maybe you need retraining because you have a new regime in your dealership, we know that never happens. Uh, any division, any department, any side of the business, uh, Larry and his team can definitely help. The number is below on the screen. And of course, hey, 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 and I don't mean to interrupt you, but I have to put the disclaimer on that just oh, yeah. so we're fair and I don't get you in any trouble. Yeah. Any dealers or GMs that are watching this, there is a warning. If you do hire me, particularly with training, I'm going to get all your people to sell more cars, which will increase your gross. You'll have capital gains problems. So you may have to pay a lot more taxes because you'll be a lot more successful if you hire me. So just be forewarned. <laughs> and last but not least, I know, Larry, you have a book. Maybe you can talk a little bit about that if anyone's interested. I'm sure you can send Larry an email if you want to find out where to get it. But go ahead. Sure. Uh, my, uh, during the pandemic, um, since I hate staring out the window and being bored, as we've already established, I wrote a book and I was going to make it this thing or that thing. And then at some point I, I, I grabbed a, a guy who I've been friends with forever, who's very bright. And I grabbed the young lady who ran an insurance agency. She's got about nine degrees, very bright. Yeah. And I was going over it with uh, my friend and he said, Larry, you're going to talk about in the book about the people that don't even try to try. And, and the guy's name is Alan. I said, Alan, people that don't even try to try are beset by inner moron demons. By the time we got done laughing, I said, okay, we just found our book title. It's called Inner Moron Demons, how to avoid them and how to live your best life. It's on Amazon, Larry J. Feldman. Um, I, I can't tell you how many people in this industry have read it and called me up and said, man, I, I didn't think I'd like it or I didn't under, I loved it because it, it cuts right to the chase. Um, I, I Again, owing to my huge ADHD, it, it, it talks about history, science, politics, music, anything you can possibly imagine. But it revolves around the fact that as my father always told me, Everybody in the graveyard would get up and take every one of your problems in a minute. So shut up, stop complaining, realize the good things you do have, and if there are problems, make them better. Yeah, and and just so you know, it's not in little tiny type, and it's not a it's not a five hundred page to two hour read. <laughs> so just for the for those people who I know have ADHD in the car business who maybe can't read a, a full novel in one sitting, you can definitely well, 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 there's an audio book too, so oh, there's, there's no excuse. Version. For those people on the go, uh, if you're listening to us on audio, you can also get it on an audio format. And Larry, are you voicing that? You no, voicing that? I, I let the, the guy that, that one of the guys that helped me write it, Alan, has been in radio forever. Oh, okay. so I got a, I think I have a pretty good voice. I'm a lead singer in a band, but Alan's got a radio voice. He's got the sonorous tone. So I said, yeah. I mean, he didn't think, he thought I was going to read it. I says, you read it. And he, boy, did he do a heck of a job with it. 
Yeah, and for those people who aren't familiar with uh, Larry and his music career, where can you get uh, more of your music from? We're everywhere. We're on SoundCloud. Yeah. We've got seven CDs out. The band is called The Real Fugitives. Man, go to YouTube and pull up The Real Fugitives or, or go to SoundCloud. Um, anywhere you see music. By the way, we just had a couple songs in a movie called Alice and the Vampire Queen. And we've got, I just got word that we're putting songs in a, in a, a movie called Cash Storm. I'm starting to get involved with some uh, some pretty interesting people and trying to push. Again, we'll be dead soon. We don't know how soon, but it ain't going to be forever. You want to you want to fill every day with as much information, as much fun, and be as productive as you possibly can. That that's the end of my sermon. Fantastic. Well, thanks for taking the time, Larry. And if you want to be on the Auto Hub Show, you can send an email to Ian at AutoHubShow.com, or you can obviously reach out online. I'm on LinkedIn and everywhere else where you can see. And of course, if you need help from Larry or his team, the number is below. Uh, it's 215-407-5174. That's 215-407-5174 or via email, Larry at careerchangersusa.com or on the internet. And last but not least, Larry does answer his telephone. Yeah, that's right. He actually answers the phone. So if you need help, reach out. And thanks again for the support for the show and, of course, all the great insight and, of course, the entertainment. Have yourself a great day, Larry. You too, sir. Thank you. you. See you later. Uh, one second here. Do, 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 do. Where is it? There it is. That one. This one.